Um, welcome, everybody. Um, this is the 2009 um, AIA Honor Awards uh, presentation and lecture. I want to, um, there's a lot of people here, really, really good turnout, so thank you very much for showing up. Thank you for the architects who are representing their firms here tonight. And um, there are um, some, some other people that we would like to thank, uh, first and foremost, um, our sponsors, NBBJ, specifically the Grange team, Tyvek, Metz Shelley Bauman, Messer Construction, Corn Acrocosin, Gilbane, Stephen Schaefer, Grange Insurance, Schindler, SBM, STA, Quandell, the Mohawk Group, 12310, HAWA, and others. Thank you very much for your support. I would also like to thank uh, some individuals in the AIA, uh, Tim Hawk, our president, Gwen, indispensable Berlecamp, thank you. Uh, John Kelleher, director of the committee in design, or director at large. <laughs> and my co-chair, Mike Suriano. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Um, and also, Mr. Stockman for showing up. Thank you, Doug. Um, so uh, this is uh, not only a, um, a, it's gonna be a really cool lecture, but it's, it's, uh, it's also a, um, a celebration of some of the best work that we're doing in town. Um, I think there's a, a, a lot of good work that's being done and it's good to, to give credit to it and it's good to recognize it and it's good to have the peers, our peers here um, amongst with the students. It's also good for the students to see this. Um, I would like to individually go over uh, each of the firms that submitted work and I'm gonna do this fairly quickly but I, I think it should be acknowledged. Um, Moody Nolan, thank you very much. Anybody here from Moody Nolan? Hi, Julie. Uh, they submitted several projects. Maleka Architecture, FMS Architects, Design Group, Hardline Design Company, Myers and Associates, C. Bhakti, Schooley Caldwell, JL Bender. Jonathan Barnes, Architecture and Design, NBBJ, WSA Studio, Luptum Rausch, Anshin and Allen, Carlsberger, Sullivan Brook Architects, GRA plus D Architects, or GRAD, Eric Thompson, oh, I'm here somewhere, Roger Skraniak, ACOC Associates, m a Architects, and uh, Lincoln Street Studios. Thank you. Uh, this year we, uh, we got a total of 51 projects, uh, seven, 51 submissions, and seven, seven, seven of them were uh, actual, uh, were just, were projects. But it, it was a really good turnout, and uh, we, we are, we're always um, very happy to, to get a large turnout like this, even though know, sometimes uh, with the economy being the way it is, some people get um, a little bit shy and in, in, in terms of uh, expenditures, but I, I think it's worth to recognize the work and the, and, and the firms involved. So uh, tonight we have with us um, uh, Doug, Doug Stockman from uh, El Dorado Architects, and uh, I'd like to quickly give you a little bit of background on uh, El Dorado. Uh, El Dorado is based in Kansas City, Missouri, and uh, they've been in, ex in um, existence since 1996, um, and we were just discussing this earlier today, And because uh, as many of you know, um, El Dorado um, was recently published, and they were in the, uh, the cover of Architect Magazine, and while all that is great, uh, they've been slugging it out since 1996, so don't forget that. <laughs> There's a lot of work, a lot of hard effort, and and sacrifice involved there. Um, I, I met these guys in, um, in, in uh, New Orleans at Tulane U University. Uh, we were introduced by a colleague. And what struck me and what, what uh, made the light bulb in my head go off um, was this sense of, of um, fun that they, 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 they bring to their work. Um, you know, they're, 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 they have a, a high attention to detail. I think they, they, they love their craft but they don't take themselves too seriously and they really have a lot of fun in what, in, in what they do. And I, I, that, 
that, that resonated with me, and I think that uh, that's one of the reasons that I asked him to, uh, to join us today. So I appreciate it. Uh, a couple of words about Doug, and I'll make it quick. Uh, Doug uh, has over 16 years of professional experience and has been with El Dorado since its inception in 1996. He's a co-founding partner. Uh, throughout this time, he has amassed a wide range of project experience that has honed his design philosophy and expertise. He holds a strong commitment to uh, producing exceptional, high-quality work, a dedication that is evident in the number of his projects that have been recognized with AIA awards. All of the projects he has worked on have benefited from his integrated appreciation of how rigorous design and accurate documentation result in high quality work. He brings a consistent level of intensity and engagement to every step of the design and construction process, from programming and design through administering construction. And within each phase of the project, he listens and collaborates with all parties involved. And we also talked about uh, that aspect of the work um, today, also during lunch, um, listening and how, how crucial it is to a good practice. So with that said, Doug Stockton. Well, uh, Roberto, thank you, and thank you, uh, Columbus, for, for having me here today and uh, giving us the opportunity to actually uh, jury your work. And uh, just a few words about that. Um, First of all, congratulations to everybody. I mean, it was an impressive body of work that we had to go through. Um, obviously, it goes without saying that it, it, these things are, are never easy. And so as we do this around the country, as architects gather together and, and try to decide what determines the deserving project of, of having an award, we, we, we kind of had to ask ourselves a couple questions about what that meant. And it's something that El Dorado has asked itself from day one, is what does, what does getting an award mean? Well, an award essentially means that at its most simplistic level, you're doing good work. So the question is, what is, what is good work? So a couple questions come to mind for us. What is the basis for determining whether, good, whether work is good or not? Who decides? Can a process be set up to routinely increase the chances of creating good work? Why does good work matter? What is the role of the client in establishing good work as a goal, then realizing it? So while we didn't have an intimate relationship with any of you, these were some of the questions that we asked ourselves when reviewing some of the work that we had in front of us. And it also influences kind of the way we, we try to talk about our work. And what, I've, what we've decided to do today is, is, to, is to kind of bring you um, a presentation of what we feel good work is. Um, that it really, it really describes the underlying ambition of every project that we take on. Um, in the lecture, we'll use examples of completed, unbuilt, and soon-to-be-built work uh, to just really unpack the, the breadth of what constitutes good work. Um, and then we may use some other examples that, that by others uh, that may be useful in the presentation. So, with that said, um,
really uh, focus in on a, on a pretty small congregation just outside of the Lawrence uh, campus, which involved an addition to a small schoolhouse. Um, so you have a small, small schoolhouse and then a, a sanctuary for the congregation of about 75 or 100 people. So you might create a little schoolhouse and then a proposed new addition.
set of uh, projects. Uh, this is a, a kind of a massive overhaul of what used to be the only TWA headquarters in Kansas City. For those of you who don't know, TWA was actually headquartered in Kansas City. They did all their training, flight, stewardship, um, everything happened there. Um, obviously, that's no longer existence. But the building ended up like this. In within this courtyard space, there's a, 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 a bunch of staple seating that's planted. In this photograph, it's not shown, but it, it's, it's just blossoming now. And then a local artist actually did some of his uh, rotating grill to kind of sit along this parking garage wall right here. The roof was, strangely enough, absolutely completely flat. There was no paper whatsoever. It also We were actually able to work with uh, a local uh, landscape architect and, uh, and also uh, a hydrotech uh, roofing systems to come up with a, a planet roof system that just works with the building. So the whole thing is actually sitting in about three inches of soil. It is not irrigated at this point. It was temporarily irrigated in the beginning, but now it's going to take a whole uh, sort of combination of regular soil and then uh, granular. Yeah. 
kind of recaps the history of the building. In the 50s, what happened, and how we took it back to its original form. What's missing here, oh no, that's, never mind. Okay. I'm not a secret, sorry. Uh, a project of, of, of similar character um, was in Waldo, which is about 70 blocks south of there. Area, but it's kind of 
started looking at different ways to layer a system of, 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 kind of visual filters through the site and really sort of to look at, at, at a view from this bridge, maybe over that building, or from that building over this bridge, or from that building back to that bridge. And it started to compose both photographic images, uh, shadows from buildings being cast, and different pieces of, of, of 
So we recall the uh, consequence system again, but what we wanted to look at was more of the, the flat application. So if you've ever seen these systems before, in their intended use, not so great. But we saw some more potential. So what we're looking at doing um, is actually creating a steel frame
So, um, thank you, Doug. Appreciate that. Um, uh, at this point, we're going to um, move on and we're going to begin to uh, acknowledge some of the projects that um, Doug and his partner and his colleagues um, have deemed worthy of uh, an, an award. Um, and uh, I'll let him go through that right now. And um, we'll have a question and answer session at the end of this. Okay, so I thought first we probably, um, there, there was a few projects that, um, that we really felt uh, just needing some mention, even though they didn't get awards, um, I think, with, with anything. It's, some, some always resonate with you, and there might be one or two reasons why, but um, we do have a couple projects that we'd like to recognize in that manner. So the first is uh, Ernie's Medicine Shop by WSA Studio. And you'll have to help me if I don't get this. Um, so I think what really was pretty clear to us here was that a, re a real paying a lot of attention to, to its context. Studying everything that is around it, both in terms of its urban fabric, the grid, the scale, Zooming out even a little bit further, understanding the, the, the nature of, of retail and maybe, maybe what happened to the corner store. Looking at proportion and scale. And really, you know, really digging into to some of the details of, of uh, a site like this that um, that, don't, that often get overlooked or that we assume that, that the natural thing to do is set it back off the street and put a parking lot in front of it. I think this really took a, took a stand and said, no, we're going we're gonna approach to this, approach this in a manner that, that, that would encourage um, this interaction with the street. And so you see here a, a, a really nice kind of entry sequence that, that brings you into a, a courtyard that then sends you into different parts of the building that, that allow you to access it both from the street and the parking lot. View through there. And then really just, I mean, paying attention to, to composition and, and facade treatments. I think it, it, it really just did a really nice job of, of you know, approaching kind of a, a nice the warmth of, of brick and, and some cool metal siding and, and visual connection that, that was achieved through just a, a real targeted way of using glazing. And then there's just a little indent for the entryway here. It's pretty nice. And even the small entryways. And the street view further down the block, how, that, how this building kind of interacts with that. Pay attention to some nice details. And this is what I, this is what I might like to feel like in a pharmacy. And the entry's great. I think the entry to the pharmacy is just spectacular. Very, very. Uh, I don't know. Just really understands its its sort of its corner position. So the second one that that we thought was, was pretty genuine, it was the Sutherland building. Uh, basic industrial building uh, with, a, with a small addition and mostly renovation. You can kind of see here a lot of existing buildings and, and a really small part of it was, was the entryway. But I think it took a real spare approach and not trying to do too much.
see a section here. This is the old building. I mean, oft oftentimes these things are forgotten, and I, and I think the, the careful attention to, do, to, doing, to doing not too much probably made this successful. You can kind of see here the finished product. Entry lobby. And I love this. I mean, this is, the, this is exactly what I'm talking about, just this, this leaving of the terracotta and the CMU and the opening and, and just kind of embracing it, not, not feeling like you have to fix every little corner and every little, little section of the building, that, that sometimes it's okay to just let that go. Okay. So now we'll uh, move on to the uh, merit awards. And Roberto, are, are they supposed to come down? Yeah, what, what, uh, we were hoping of, uh, we, were, we were hoping to do is um, as as uh, each um, project is called, we would like um, the team to stand and be recognized, and we'll clap for you. And uh, and then um, and if you could send one representative from your team down and sit that table over there, and um, we'll have a brief Q and A session afterwards, and hopefully we'll have a, a good discussion to follow. That's the, that's the hope, at least. So, thank you. <clears throat> so our first, our first Merit Award goes to Grange Insurance Headquarters, done by NBBJ. So there, there were numerous um, elements to this, this project that really impressed us, um, but what was most evident was um, it's, it, that it was a, a really genuine urban contextual response. And, and by that I mean it, it really took into account its site. And it, it, it appeared from, from our point of view that, that there was a, a, a fairly intimate neighborhood that surrounded, low scale and, and intimate neighborhood that surrounded on, on, the, on the east and south side, assuming this is looking north. <laughs> um, and then at the, I think the brewery district over to the left here, and then a view of downtown to the north. So as you, as you begin to move through the project, you really begin to understand how everything is positioned. Um, but I think it has a real, a real urban presence without dominating uh, its surroundings. Some views of the floor plan. I think we especially like the way that, that the building um, approached the street with this little element here composition of the masses and then how those masses differentiate in materials. Again, another view of that, of that lower portion of the building looking back up north. <laughs> Paying special attention to landscaping and how, how that can, can really be used to you know, buffer between the, the, the rest of the city and this, and this site in particular. Just the way that the, the courtyard really connected so well with the lobby space. Appropriate use of sunscreening. And then also, you know, I think not just using, using rooftop, guard, rooftop planted roofs as a, as a sustainable measure, but also really leveraging it in an aesthetic way. Nice project. Congratulations. Uh, next award goes to the Ohio State University Thompson Library Innovation and Edition with, for uh, ACOC and Associates. I actually had the pleasure of, of going here in my very brief moment between landing and 
eating lunch and coming here. Uh, Roberto was kind enough to take me. I, I told him I really wanted to see this. Um, I mean, we don't do a lot of preservation work necessarily. Um, we do mostly rehab, but I think there was there was something really special about this, um, not just in terms of preservation, but but how it was handled uh, in its renovation and its addition. Um, just a, a real uh, the quality of restoration is just top notch, thoughtfully done. Uh, the craftsmanship was was just really impeccable. Um, it it. When we were reviewing it, it really felt like the heart of campus, and, and when I was there this afternoon, it, it certainly had every bit of that. Um, kind of a beautiful old structure uh, that, you know, in the, in the process of renovating it, I think this idea of, of peeling away some of the skin of, of the stacks and exposing it to the, to the uh, kind of the heart of the library, if you will, um, just such an impressive, impressive move there. And then, I, I didn't quite really understand the intimacy of this street until I got here today, so it, it really helped to kind of go there. Um, but regardless, it, it, it really made a lot of sense to us. Um, I, I think this is what got us here. At first, you know, I'd look at the images on the left and I would have thought, oh, well, that's kind of a cool 50s library. And then, and then you realize what happened. And I just, it was amazing that somebody would actually have the idea to fill that in. I hope that was no one here. <laughs> Congratulations to the one who decided to take it out. Um, but I think to us, it, 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 it has this idea of creation of place. Um, it's, it's been restored to a library. And I, and I, was, I was in there today and, and it was just, it felt everybody, all the students were busy studying and it was nice and quiet, with the exception of the Doritos chips that were being eaten sometimes. <laughs> but just a really beautiful room to be in and the, the lighting was, was just extremely pleasant. Um, careful attention to, to you know, the new life to safe, safe, safety features that we have to deal with, sprinkler heads, smoke alarms, all carefully thought through and, and placed in just the right spot as if they were all, all, always there. And then of course the new addition and how it really addresses the street that, that wraps around the, the back side of the library. I mean, this is my favorite shot here. Um, and I, this is the one thing I wanted to do when I came here was just to get an idea of these stacks that, that just open themselves up to the atrium. Um, really just a, a great feeling to be in that space. Now, I gotta admit, I kinda liked this edition at the beginning. <laughs> I did like its simplicity, but I think when you put the whole thing into context, it, it really, it all obviously made sense to, to remove it and, and do something that was more appropriate for the building. So, nice work. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna jump down and scale for a minute. Uh, next merit award goes to Pistachio Vera by Jonathan Barnes, Architecture and Design. Um, to us, this was you know, one of the, the most unassuming projects that we reviewed. And just really, just a nice little urban insertion. I love dumb plans. <laughs> this is a, an example of a great dumb plan. And kudos to showing a bathroom. That's, um, I think, the, the, the true measure of a project success is whether you can, you can take that, that level of attention into the bathroom. It's a, it's a place that we probably use more than any other space. It should be nice. It should be pleasant. This is pleasant. Can we go there tomorrow? Okay, good. We have two of the same. I think, what 
one of the most important parts of this thing is that it, it, have every, it has everything in, in the right place. Everything's right where it should be. Just a really nice, simple use of color and just really got every, everything right. It makes me want to eat a pastry. Do you feel hungry? I feel hungry. Nice work. Okay, so for the honor awards, uh, the first the first project is going to go to first award is going to go to the Design Square Apartments by Acock and Associates. I also had the pleasure of going to this project today, and I can tell you that it measured up to everything that I imagined it to be. Um, just really, um, you know, that I think what was was so clear to us, especially from this image, was this the sense of communal living uh, that you could really sort of see into that and, and the level of transparency that it has with this, this quad out in front is really spectacular. I'm really kind of, I, I don't know what was there before, but it, it certainly seems to have completed this quad. I, I think probably the college needs to go a step further in figuring out how to connect the quad to the building now, which is nice. Just really, I mean, beautiful, again, beautiful, simple plan. It, it, it didn't, it, it did what it was supposed to do. I mean, there's just really wonderful elements. The hallways, just these undulating uh, dips and, and, and niches to create entryways into the units. Um, once we get to the image, you'll see what I mean, but it just really wonderful and, and simple. Kind of a section through there. I mean, it, it almost borders on feeling like a jail, but a really, a really great, great jail. <laughs> if it was a jail, I might commit a crime and go there, but and it's, not, it's a student center, obviously, so we're... The, uh, you know, one of the things that, that came, that was evident to me when I was there today is that it also, you know, the employment of basic standard systems, storefront systems, but doing it in a way that, that doesn't make you feel like the window glazer got a hold of it and turned it into something you didn't want. I mean, it sort of, I have a feeling there was a real uh, level of stick to that, that ensured that it, it turned out to be this successful. But the solid and, and transparent panels kind of um, in combination with the ventilation units and the little grills that um, supply the HVAC systems, um, just really, I mean, really well done. And then the the corrugated soffits underneath the building, you know, in lieu of the, what you might expect plaster. Um, just really, a really good use of, of systems that are available out there. Um, I mean, you know, you could kind of tell that this was a, a project that didn't have a, a, an enormously huge budget, but that did absolutely everything with every dollar that they had. I mean, the awning, too, just a nice little subtle touch there. And this is what I'm talking about. You know, it could, it could be a jail, but it's just, it's, I mean, this is such a beautiful hallway to walk through. The lighting, the light level is amazing. I mean, you, you, you feel this just sense of freshness and, and energy in here, and, and even right down to the light fixtures, these little beautiful light, square light fixtures here. And the vertical space within the hallways is really nice, too. It really, it really sort of invokes this idea of interaction between, between suites, so that there's not only this high level of interaction within these suites, but then between the suites themselves, what could have happened in these hallways. Um, again, encouraging this sense of communal living. And then you move into the units, and they're really warm. Just great use of materials here. And then the views, you know, both out this way, and then out to the quad area, and back across to the other building. I really hope the furniture is in this good shape still. These are students, right? No offense, I was one too. So, great job. Our final honor award goes 
goes to the Cleveland Clinic Miller Family Pavilion and Glickman Tower by NBBJ. A, a massive scale uh, project. I don't, there, are, there aren't many people who can, who can really pull this off very well. And I think that's one of the things that we noticed is that it, it really, again, really understood its context and took what must have been an incredibly complex program and massaged it into what is a very simple, simple diagram of, of spaces and just the form, I think, really, really is pretty spectacular. Um, just a really beautiful place to, 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 I would imagine, to come visit. Um, I, I asked Roberta to take me there, and he said, well, we don't really have enough time. That's a little too much. Some of these, these sort of these abstract views just, I think, really kind of capture you know, the simplicity at such a massive scale and not trying, not, not, you know, not trying to ordain the building with elements that in the end don't mean anything. It just sort of embraced the, the massiveness of it all and, and, and then just to use the form to really amp it up. Paying attention to, you know, circulation paths and what you do in between these spaces with, with with vegetation and, and water. And I think what was really amazing was that it seemed like it seemed like the, the, the detail never stopped. Like it was consistent from the largest view to the smallest space, whether it was this, whether it was a, a little seminar room or the hallway. But just really clean, really clean and nice. Pure. I mean, it, it it felt like what it should be. Even the artwork made perfect sense. Again, if if I was sick, I'd want to be here. <laughs> or work here. And then the rooms. I mean, I. I've just had two kids, and I know what hospital rooms are like. God awful. Um, this, so this is really uh, just to me again talking about, you know, really taking that that level of of thoughtfulness, um, and and really pulling it all the way down to to how the, the rooms themselves are designed. Really, really pleasant. And the common areas, the outdoor spaces. Okay, nice work. The students are leaving en masse. Um, we're going to, uh, there's, a, there's also a People's Choice Award. Um, this was uh, on the website and uh, we had a, a lot of votes and we've, uh, we've asked uh, Matt Monin with uh, Messer Construction since uh, they are the ones that are, uh, um, they're sponsoring this award. Uh, if they could come up, please, to uh, to present this. Well, we want to thank everyone who voted once again this year. Uh, I think we had a record turnout at the polls of about 1,500 votes. Um, no casinos at stake, but certainly a. a, a <laughs> A prestigious award nonetheless um, and I think once again the winner was by a pretty clear margin so we want to congratulate the team from Carlsberger for their work on the Nicewanger Children's Hospital in Johnson City Thanks. Any, any words? Any, uh, and I don't know if anyone from Carlsberger yeah, is here tonight from the team Congratulations.
So, thank you, Doug. <laughs> um, so we've come to the end of the evening. I'd like to uh, thank again all our sponsors. Uh, I would also like to thank um, OSU, uh, the Nolte School of Architecture. Thank you very much for hosting us. Um, again, um, all the, uh, the sponsors and uh, the people that were part of making this night possible. Um, just a word to the students, if there are any left. Um, we are going to break and go on to a um, um, little space out there and have a couple of drinks. And uh, as, as it is OSU policy, uh, students are not allowed to do that. So if you would excuse us, we're going to go have a couple of drinks. But uh, thanks for coming out. We appreciate your, your attendance. Um, now, we're going to have a brief Q&A session. If uh, one of the members from each of the teams that, that received an award could come up, um, we'll have a couple of questions, maybe three. Thanks. So, any questions? Yes, John. This can go to anyone on their own. I'll 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 repeat your question so everybody can hear it. Okay, so this is the question. In the context of good work,
Another question. Is there anything, Doug, that came out of the, uh, the jury deliberation? Any questions that were left unanswered or that you wish you would have asked or that well, you he, could have asked? He took my question. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Come on.
Please. So um, I, I want to, I've noticed three, three things here, and, and I, I want to close with this because um, there's some drinking. <laughs> uh, but, but anyway, uh, those three things sort of segue into a uh, conversation that's going to happen tomorrow afternoon in, in design, which you're all welcome to come, please. It's uh, tomorrow at, uh, from 1 to 4 at the um, OSU 4-H building. If you have questions email me or Gwen or anybody at the AIA and we can send you directions. But it's going to be inter interesting. Um, we're going to have a, a 
a good discussion. Um, Anne is going to join us, and uh, Doug is going to be there. Um, Mike Bills from the College of uh, Business is going to be there. So it's going to be a good discussion. And it's going to deal with um, the forces of economy and constraints in, in, in architecture and how that's moving the, uh, the, the profession in a certain direction, which has to do with uh, the obser uh, a quick observation. Three things that I've noticed uh, that, were, that kept coming up during the comments and during the question, making use of, of every dollar, um, being, being conscious of where the money is going. Number two, um, extracting the beauty of the existing, of the site, whether it's a site or an existing structure or a context. And number three, collaboration, 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 um, which is beginning, I see, to move um, where, where architecture is moving beyond its uh, comfortable territory. Sort of nod to, uh, to, 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 to a theme. But um, I mean, we're, we're going to touch a little bit more on this tomorrow. But if you guys have, we can discuss this a little bit further outside. But um, I, 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 I see a, a shift, probably it's been happening for a while, but it's, I, I think it's beginning to get more and more momentum as, as, as pressures, as, as economic pressures and city, well, not city, but economic pressures begin to bear on what we're doing. So something to think about. Let's go have a drink, and thank you very much.